Good morning, and thank you for being here. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And later in verse 13, it says, Now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We've gathered here to remember and celebrate the life of someone who understood what that verse means. They were once far away, and they were brought near by the blood of Christ. We celebrate the life of Shirley Ann Barrow. Shirley was born on October 18, 1935, in Eureka, Illinois, to Tillman and Velda Shoemaker Ficht. She died at the age of 88 at 7.30 a.m. on Tuesday, April 9th, at her home in Metamora. Shirley was married to Christy L. Barrow for almost 68 years. Their wedding took place on July 1st, 1956, in Washburn, Illinois. Shirley was a member of the congregation that meets in this place, Woodland Baptist Church. She taught Sunday school for the four- and five-year-olds for over 50 years, which is amazing all by itself. She also served as the church treasurer for 25 years and was a weekday preschool teacher for over 20 years. She also volunteered at Snyder Village in Metamora for a number of years. Shirley loved to garden, she loved to cook, she loved to sew. Shirley was involved in all her children's and grandchildren's activities. Shirley survived by her husband, Christy of Metamora, and by four children, Christine Barrow of Versailles, Kentucky, Brad and Sarah Barrow of Metamora, Carrie and Susan Barrow of Richmond, Kentucky, and Tim and Ann Barrow of Tremont. Shirley was blessed to have 12 grandchildren and 18 great-grandchildren who survive her. She's also survived by her brothers, Thomas Ficht of Big Canoe, Georgia, Donald and Pat Ficht of Morton, Illinois, and she's survived by her sister, Judy Matson of Waterloo, Illinois. Shirley is also survived by a brother-in-law, Jim Cole of Florida. She was preceded in death by her parents, by her sister, Connie Cole, her sisters-in-law, Jean Ficht and Carol Ficht, and by her brother-in-law, Carl Matson. As I thought about Shirley and what she had been through the last several months, I thought about this scripture, and I thought it was appropriate to read today. It's from 2 Timothy chapter 4. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Would you pray with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, we know that you are our refuge and our strength. And today we pray for all those who grieve, especially for Shirley's family. Comfort them with your peace, give them grace, remind them of your presence and your faithfulness throughout this day. Wrap your loving arms around them so they would not be overwhelmed by their loss, but, but have confidence today in your goodness, in your presence, and give them the strength they need to meet the days to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Try following that. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Stephanie. Have you ever had a sugar cookie? <laughs> or maybe a better question is, have you ever had one of Grandma's sugar cookies? Yes. <laughs> Recently, I came to the conclusion that Grandma was a lot like the sugar cookies she'd made for years. She was calculated, as baking ingredients should be. She'd been gently worked, mixed, folded, and rolled as life circumstances came to pass. She came out sweet and tender with an occasional crisp edge when needed. <laughs> then she topped her cookies with icing and a few sprinkles, and just like that, she had a little spunk and flair. Like cookies, Grandma was a family favorite. She made you feel warm and happy inside. There was plenty to share, and she always left you wanting more. When I reflect on the impact Grandma had on my life, the word that floods my mind is grateful. I'm grateful to have been loved by her. She individually cared about each one of her family members. When my siblings and I were young and lived far away, she'd send us care packages oftentimes including those cookies. She wanted to make your favorite foods, like her famous egg pancakes. While they were sizzling in the skillet, we sat around the table betting on how many we could eat and maybe leaving the table a little too full. She blessed us with her sewing skills more times than I can remember. Us grand girls were surprised with homemade kitties one Christmas. I remember some of her special gifts, a robe, a dress, curtains for my room, the flower girl dress for my wedding, and a teddy bear for baby Emma. She also loved us by teaching us what we should and shouldn't do. For example, we were not allowed to say the B word at her house. Bored. <laughs> or if cousins were arguing, she would proclaim she was not going to be the referee. That meant we had better figure it out, or at least hide it well. I'm grateful for how she engaged each of us grandchildren and great-grandchildren in her own way. I loved the picture books she read to us, Lengthy, Looking for Susie, or Happy Birthday Moon. 
I eventually bought copies to read to my own children and even imitated some of Grandma's commentary as I read. She played countless games with us, and even though for card games, she always claimed she had terrible cards and somehow won. I remember projects she would have ready for me in the summers. For me, summer wasn't complete without coming to Grandma's for a week or two. Once we made a skirt, another time we turned a latch hook masterpiece of mine into a pillow. Being in the kitchen with Grandma was one of my favorite places, even if it was while washing every single dish that was used to both prepare and serve and eat the food for even up to 15 to 20 of us. When I'd leave to go back home, she told me she missed her dishwasher. I think many of us were happy when she moved into the cottage and finally got her very own dishwasher. <laughs> I'm grateful for each kitchen lesson I learned from her, which caused my quality of a dish to be determined by, does it taste like grandma's? It was important to be in the kitchen with her when she cooked, because for many of her recipes, I asked over the years and then tried them. But I learned a person had to closely watch Grandma to see what she really did to make the recipe turn out like hers. When I make dinner for a large group, I think how Grandma made Wednesday church dinners for years or prepared food for numerous family gatherings. Her voice sounds often in my head when I'm in the kitchen, try to work the dough as little as possible so it's tender, or the recipe says a teaspoon of vanilla, I usually add closer to a tablespoon. I'm grateful for time in her garden. What a talent she had. Grandma's garden strawberries and sweet corn were always my favorite. I remember lots of times snapping beans or shelling peas in her driveway on a cool summer morning and being so surprised about how many worms there are in garden broccoli and watching how to get them out. She said not to worry, though, if you don't get them all. It's just a little extra protein. <laughs> she explained to me once the irony that while she grew up, she didn't like garden work, but she had to work the garden anyway, and how funny it is that years later she became known as the garden lady. As I grew into young adulthood and adulthood, I became even more grateful for her thoughtfulness and inspired by her ways and her character. I knew she regularly prayed for her family members. I enjoyed helping in her preschool Sunday school class and learned lessons that I implemented when I babysat, taught elementary school, and parented my own children. I'd call her to hear her thoughts or share stories to get affirmation from Grandma that I was doing the right thing. At times, I hear her guiding voice in my head or her infectious laughter. I loved receiving cards and notes written in her beautiful script and have saved so many of them. I'm grateful for her legacy of faith and marriage. She modeled how to love God, how to care for a husband, and how to serve her church and community throughout a whole life. Her volunteering to teach four and five-year-old Sunday school for 50 years always inspired me. I'm grateful that Grandma gave guidance and mentorship to me through various stages of my life as she lived out what Titus chapter 2 says about older women. By looking at them, the younger women will know how to love their husbands and children, be virtuous and pure, keep a good house, be good wives. We don't want anyone looking down on God's message because of their behavior. The Bible teaches us that Christ is to be our model. But to me, Grandma has to be an awful close second. So I'm very grateful, Grandma. Well, I, I knew I should have gone first, but <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I'm not I'm not quite the poet that my cousin is. But um, if all of you don't know me, my name, or if you do know me or don't know me, my name's Matt Jones. Uh, I'm Shirley's oldest grandson. Um, so I just want to share some things with y'all today and just looking at everybody here today I, I'm really glad to see all of you and I appreciate y'all coming um, you know by the size of this gathering I can just see the impact that my grandmother had not only on her family but her friends and this church um, I spent much of my childhood with grandma um, 
and I have many, many memories of going to Sam's Club with her to buy food for the Wednesday night meals and um, the dinners and spent many t much time here playing in the gym and exploring the halls while she cooked the meals. Um, another favorite place of mine was her preschool room and the Sunday school room where she had her fish tank. And, you know, I just kind of liked going off on my own and exploring while she was cooking. Grandma's dedication to her church left a lasting impression on me and showed me by example of what it looks like to serve others, to be generous, and to ask for nothing in return. From a very early age, I can still remember Grandma telling me just how much Jesus loved me. When I was seven or eight, Grandma had brought me to VBS like she did most summers. It was in a room just down that hall where I accepted Jesus as Lord. And I attribute that to my grandma's faithfulness. Grandma was a wonderful cook and a baker. And she always had room at her table if you stopped in for an unannounced meal, which I did a lot because, you know, I like to eat. <clears throat> She would pull a meal out of the fridge in just minutes. Her leftovers would taste like they had just been made. If you ever had the opportunity to have some of her yeast rolls, I think you would agree that they were the best. Growing up, I would always want Grandma to make my birthday cakes and would go on and on about them to my wife, Becca. And finally, Beck asked Grandma for her secret recipe. Well, as it turns out, the secret was coffee in the icing, Crisco, and a box of cake mix. <laughs> I don't think Grandma would really mind if I shared that, you know. <laughs> Sorry if she does, but <laughs> I, we still joke about that every birthday that comes around. I don't think Grandma ever missed a birthday card, even after I had become an adult. The time I spent with her on the farm at an early age, especially in the summer, was such a gift. I remember her packing us lunches and going on a field trip down into the pasture and into the, <clears throat> down into the woods. Grandma would give me my own personal Sunday, or son, I'm sorry, Grandma would give me my own personal school lesson as we looked for animals, plants, and fossils in the creek. One of my favorite early memories took place on a summer morning. Grandma and I had just picked a lot of sweet peas. Well, mostly Grandma had. I think I mostly supervised, but you know. We later sat in old lawn chairs in the cool garage with the front and back doors open with a steady breeze blowing. I don't really remember what we talked about, but I would guess it had something to do with the barn cats or the cows, um, something like that. And I often think about that perfect and relaxing summer day. Time spent on the farm with grandma was such a gift. I have one final story that I'd like to share from when I was in the early years of grade school. Grandpa was out doing his evening chores like he would do every night after work. I borrowed some rubber boots that were way too big because it had been raining a lot and was quite muddy. On the way out to find him on the farm doing whatever he was doing, I had spotted a large truckload um, in the small barn of a very fresh load of feed corn that I thought looked like it'd be really fun to play in. Well, the wet oversized boots made it almost impossible for me to climb in the bed of that truck. So I suddenly had what I thought was a great idea. I had recently learned how to open the tailgate of a truck. Well, what I thought was a good idea turned out to be a pretty bad one. As my boots filled to the top with feed corn and out onto the ground, as I was still in shock, to my horror, I could hear Grandma come running out of the house shouting, Matthew, you stay out of that corn! <laughs> she ran up to me and said, You better hope we get this cleaned up for your grandpa comes! <laughs> As the two of us grabbed anything we could find, Grandma began frantically shoveling the corn back into the truck. A minute later, Grandpa showed up as we had failed to get the corn back in the bed. <laughs> Grandpa was so mad that he didn't say anything. <laughs> and you know that's bad. I'm pretty sure that one ended with me getting a well-deserved swift kick in the back of my pants. I have been very blessed to have had such a wonderful grandma. Thank you for being here today.
my name's Jenny. If you're familiar with Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31, you'll know that it describes a wife of noble character. And I think we can all agree that Grandma emulated every bit of it. Every time we came to Grandma's, it meant coming to the farm, seeing and smelling her garden and her flowers, seeing and smelling the cows, feeding the baby calves their bottles, and a sweet little red hair calf that we named Carrot, only to realize as we got older we probably ate Carrot as a burger. <laughs> Snapping peas in the swing, playing statues or Power Rangers in the front yard, exploring the pasture, except let's be honest, I was terrified and I cried. Just ask Chris or Matt or Stephanie. <laughs> it meant egg pancakes for breakfast or cinnamon rolls, Avantis and Spumoni for dinner and dessert, celebrating birthdays and a special purple pony cake. It meant it was Christmas time and pictures by the tree, baking and decorating sugar cookies. And although I've tried, I can't quite seem to replicate them just like hers. And I've decided that's okay. I can eat Stephanie's and I'll enjoy them at least. It meant playing Uno and Racco, Rummy Cube, Sequence, and Cards. But you know where the best place to sit at the table is, right? It's actually to the left of Grandpa, because sometimes he discards those very special wild cards without knowing it. Very important. It meant family time, cousin time, time just spent together. My husband serves in the military, and in our Army life, we were fortunate to be stationed nearby for three very precious years. It was all part of God's perfect plan and timing. Moving away again to our new house, we inherited a backyard with very mature flowers and trees and blueberry bushes, and they all needed quite a bit of tender care. So even in our distance, I could call her and just talk about the gardening, and even the joy of a teeny little sprout that my daughter Leah brought home from kindergarten, and I didn't know what it was. Um, and it grew into a green bean plant, and we enjoyed it all summer. It was just a fun surprise to talk to her about. And of course, there's so much more. What a legacy and a gift of love and wisdom that she left us. And so as Proverbs 31, 31 closes, Lord, give her the reward that she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, Grandma was an incredible woman. Incredible. Um, and I have so many incredible memories with her. Too many to share, but I do want to share a few with you. Um, when I think about going to the farm, it was the best. I would, I, I think of going down the stairs and the craft shelf at the bottom of the stairs, pulling, oh, there were so many crafts from preschool and uh, construction paper and all that, pulling off crafts and doing that. We would make Play-Doh. I hated the smell of it. Still do. But it was so fun to pick our colors, and we would make that with Grandma. Um, I don't know if any of you guys remember the treadmill in the basement. We weren't supposed to play on it, but we did <laughs> when we could get away with it. <laughs> um, we would watch Shirley Temple movies. Um, I remember one of them, I think it was Heidi, used to make me cry, and she would say, Janelle, if you're going to cry, I'm not going to let you watch it. <laughs> so I'd try to, it's okay, Grandma, okay. <laughs> We read books. We weren't allowed to say the B word or be bored. And I very distinctly remember her rotary phone. It was, it was a long time ago. It had a cord a mile long. We were all just talking about it. That thing could stretch to the basement, to the bedroom. <laughs> and when they finally upgraded to a cordless phone, it was like, what? <laughs> it was great. Um, we will all miss her cooking. Uh, staying there, she would make us Mickey Mouse waffles or roly polies for breakfast. Every Christmas um, was ginger cookies. Those are my favorite. The ginger cookies are amazing. And we would eat peppermint ice cream. And those two things I still, to this day, want to carry on at Christmas because they are my favorite. And whenever I would call, um, you know, later on in life, and Grandma, my ginger cookie dough is crumbling. What am I doing wrong? Oh, well, Janelle just this, or keep working the dough, it's going to be crumbly. She always had an answer. She was always up for my sewing, sewing adventures. I would come up with these wild dreams, like, Grandma, I want to make a quilt. Okay, Janelle, let's, let's make a quilt. Grandma, I need a magical dress. All right, Janelle, pick out the fabric. She was always up for it. Um, 
this past Christmas, you know, Christmases with Grandma and Grandpa were special, and this past Christmas, um, I got to host it at my house, and that was really special, and we didn't know, obviously, that it was Grandma's last Christmas, but now that feels really special to me, and it was wild, actually, guys. The power went out. (laughs) We don't know why a transformer blew. I don't know, but we were all packed in my house, enjoying Christmas. The power went out. So we had fireplaces on. Um, My husband has an electric truck, so we plugged the Christmas tree lights into the truck. And uh, we had Christmas, you know, in in the quietness of that and in in the comfort of that. And and Grandma didn't complain. None of you complained. Thanks for putting up with the craziness. But, um, you know, even in that, she had this game, giving out out the gifts and... um, money for Christmas and she wanted us all in the room and to go through and one person was the big winner and instead of just getting one bill they got a bunch of ones (laughs) and I just I will always remember her sitting in the dark in my living room in front of the fireplace just giggling when Scott opened up the big old wad of one dollar bills she uh, was the most thoughtful and selfless she always remembered cards anniversaries, birthdays, for my kids even. She has so many great grandkids, and she would remember my kids. And then um, the thing that probably, one of the things that touched us all is just, I, I would love to know the number of miles traveled by grandma and grandpa to all their kids and grandkids' things. Um, you know, whether it was a volleyball game or a madrigal dinner or a musical in Iowa that she would come see me in, um, she was there. And my last time seeing Grandma was three weeks ago, and she came to a concert I was singing in. So to the very end, she showed up, and I felt loved and valued like I always have, and that's who she was. She wanted everyone she knew to feel loved and valued. (laughs) She was amazing, and um, I am forever grateful for her and each thing I learned from her, and we will miss her terribly, but I am so thankful that we will see her again and that she's home. Grandma. Grandma was sweet, humble, kind, quiet, spunky with a little bit of sass, and oh, so giving. She gave and served so many, and you knew she loved, I knew she loved taking care of her grandkids. She was always willing to do a sewing project, or sit in a bleacher, or babysit, or make food. You name it, she did it. She always did it with a smile on her face. She blessed my life in so many ways, and I'm forever grateful for her, giving and serving towards me, and also her love for Cole and my kids. I always loved sleepovers at the farm. They didn't happen too often, but I think that's why they're so special. I remember playing Racco with her, and man, she would whip my butt every time. And I tried so hard. We would play till the wee hours of the morning, or so I thought. She was an amazing cook. I'm not sure how we're all going to survive without her sweet potato casserole, potato salad, and pecan pies. Maybe we'll all lose a few pounds. <laughs> she was always so intentional. Living in Tremont, I didn't get the luxury of seeing her every day. But when we had time together, it was always so special. She was the best at remembering birthdays and anniversaries and the best gift giver. You knew that she thought of you when she picked out the gift, even down to the card. I truly hope I can be like her. I hope I can age gracefully and be a beautiful old woman just like her and live out my years with grace, love, and a servant's heart.
For those that don't know me, I'm Abby, and my siblings and I, we had the privilege to grow up just down the road from my grandma. It's really hard to put into words everything that my grandmother meant to us. But what comes to my mind immediately is that she was our biggest cheerleader. And a lot of our other grandkids have already said that. And she and my grandpa very rarely missed any of our activities. And when they did, it was because they were attending another ones. Um, some of my favorite memories with my grandma are from the time that I spent playing volleyball in college. Just like what Janelle said, who knows how many thousands of miles my grandparents have put spending time on the road. And she and my grandpa spent countless hours traveling with my parents to the games, sitting on hard bleachers and going to Chili's at 10 p.m. after the game because that's the only place that was open. And they were always up for it. They'd be getting home at 2 a.m. and at church the next morning. Um, she was known among my teammates for her famous sugar cookies, which she often would decorate with SIU or my team's colors. Um, and I'm pretty sure most of the girls on my team adopted her as a team grandma. Um, my grandma was also my personal scorekeeper. She'd always keep track of how many points I'd have in a game. And um, she'd tell me after, and she was never wrong. She would even argue with the official scorekeepers <laughs> if they were wrong. <laughs> she was the best grandmother that any of us could have ever asked for. But more than anything, she was a faithful servant of Jesus. And I know, as you can see here, in generations that'll come after, it will know the Lord because of the foundation that she and my grandpa had established. And I look at that and I pray that for my family and for my children and their children's children. And what a blessing it is to have assurance that as she left her earthly body, that she stood before Jesus and heard, well done, a good and faithful servant. So uh, most people don't get the opportunity to grow up living a two-minute walk or 15-second drive to their grandparents' house. I am one of the lucky ones who had that experience. I'm also one of the lucky ones who had Shirley Ann Barrow as their grandmother. <laughs> there are not enough words to describe how thankful I am for my grandma and grandpa Barrow. <laughs> Both of them have had a huge impact on my life and influence who I am today. There are so many stories and memories I could share about my grandma, um, but I'll spare a few. Some of my favorite memories are cooking chicken and mac and cheese for the boys after they were working on the farm and we heated up the barbecue sauce in the microwave. I remember her melting the bottle multiple times. <laughs> she told me it was still fine to eat. <laughs> Also, her sugar cookies at any holiday or special occasion. Going to McDonald's and getting to try a honey mustard chicken snack wrap on a Friday night when I didn't want to go to the football game. Making my favorite tie blanket that I still sleep with to this day, and I will probably forever sleep with the rest of my life. Having her in the crowd at every single sporting event, teaming up and kicking butt in Euchre and celebrating each birthday with her. My Grandma Barrow is a wonderful example of how to be a wife, mother, grandmother, and most importantly, a servant of Christ. She cared deeply for her family and friends, was intentional with her gifts, cards, and words she wrote and spoke, was a hard worker and provided within her home, had a sense of humor, and embodied a little sass here and then. There was never a doubt in my mind that I wasn't deeply loved by my grandma or that she wasn't proud of me. Grandma Bear was simply the best. I'm lucky to be her sweet Anna. Hi, my name's Kyle. Um, grandma had a big impact on all of 
us. Um, and uh, she, we knew she loved the song. We all loved her. Um, but I have a, a couple of funny stories to start, start with. Um, being um, one of the three younger boys, we, we like to uh, lead our youngest cousin, Luke, down a bad path. <laughs> uh, so uh, one, of the, one of the two best memories, um, and something we laugh, laugh at still to this day, we probably encouraged Luke to pick the stuffing out of the chairs downstairs. <laughs> and uh, we knew what was coming. We knew what was coming. Grandma loved us, but she would come down there. So <laughs> Luke was picking away at those chairs. And Scott and I are like, oh, here it comes. <laughs> and she, come, she came right down there, and she said, Luke, Luke, and what proceeded after that we won't talk about. Um, <clears throat> and that was Christmas. Chris, we had a lot of Christmas memories. Um, we spent a lot of time in the basement causing trouble. Um, one, other, one other memory, Scott and Luke got a uh, new computer game, and uh, they were playing it on Grandma's computer, and I don't know what happened. We were young. But uh, even after they closed out the games, d dinosaurs were walking all over the computer. And um, if you know Grandma and Grandpa, they struggled with their computer. So to have uh, dinosaurs walking across the computer was probably one of the funniest things ever. Um, now, um, I gained a lot of uh, my love for gardening and really to my love for nature and outdoors really came from spending time with Grandma and spending time at the farm. Um, and over the last year, Grandma always had a garden, but she just she couldn't do it anymore, really. So one of the best memories is being able to bring her stuff over the last year that I grew. And uh, that was really special because it meant a lot to her. So um, just, you know, she loved us all, and she left a lasting impact. So we just want to remember her for that. I'm Joseph, Brad's oldest. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, I have lots of good memories of, of Grandma Barrow, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short and brief. But uh, growing up, like Anna already, already said, we, we lived about, a, if Anna was taking two minutes to walk down there, she was walking kind of slow. So it might have been about a minute, but um, when, mom would go, when mom would go to work, she would drop us off down there. And usually, sometimes we were there for a little bit longer than what uh, I could handle. So I would start causing some troubles with them, and then Grandma would get out the broom and start chasing me around <laughs> the, dri the driveway before <laughs> the, um, the bus could get there. And, yeah, that, I won't forget that. I'm not sure if that was a good, uh, good thing or not, but, but um, she kept me in line. So um, saying that, just some other things when I was growing up, just when we'd be out in the, in the field uh, bailing, hey, I knew right when I saw Grandma that it was either time for lunch or it was time for a, a new jug of water or sometimes lemonade if, if we got lucky. Um, and the last thing that I'll, I'll never forget is, and always remember is, she always made sure I had, I had plenty of grape jelly that she would make. Um, it, there's a, a jar over there, but when I was living, or when I was still at my parents' house, um, it was easy, like grandma would, would bring over an extra jar and, and, and just tell me that, um, <coughs> Here, here's your here's your jar, and I would just go put it up in the cabinet. But once I got on my own, it just seemed like there were multiple jars every single time I would, I would see them, and I would be like my mom. I'm like, mom, I already have like four jars at my apartment at my house. Can I just keep this here for right now? But I, she always made sure to take care of all her grandkids, and um, I will always remember for that. But thank everyone for being here again. Okay for me to use? Perfect. Well, I think we've heard um, mom, grandma loved her family, um, but she loved Jesus. And so we are going to, I don't need a bullpen, I'm good. Um, we're going to sing 217 out of the church hymnal. I'm going to ask you to stand. Oh, how I love Jesus. That's what mom wanted to have sung. So we're going to sing that. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. 
There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds that music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Verse 2. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, an incredible legacy. In John chapter 14, Jesus is speaking. He says this, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Someone has said that death is the anesthetic that God uses when he changes bodies. And that's what happened on April 9th to Shirley. God administered the anesthetic of death, and he changed bodies for her. From that physical body that was so worn, with so many problems, in which she had lived here. And God changed her to that eternal spiritual body in which she will live in the life to come. Mortality put on immortality. The perishable put on the imperishable. Death was swallowed up in victory. Shirley has moved from being spiritually in the presence of Jesus Christ to being physically in his presence. I love the story of Duke McCall. He was the president of Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. And a number of years ago, his wife died. And Dr. McCall was trying to explain some of his feelings when he wrote this. After church service, a well-intentioned acquaintance caught me off guard by saying, I'm sorry you lost your wife. Before I could edit my response, I said, I did not lose my wife. I know where Marguerite is. I am the one who is lost. You may be able to relate to that this morning, at least a little bit. You know where Shirley is, but you feel disoriented, maybe a little lost. The Bible tells us that we grieve, but it says that we do not have to grieve as those who have no hope. Because our hope is in Christ. Shirley Barrow's hope was in Christ. And through Christ we know that death is not the end. Because our hope is in Christ, we do not gather here today filled 
with despair. There's a sense of loss today. But we do not feel despair. We have hope. We gather here to celebrate a wonderful Christian life. And we can learn from what's happened to us as we experience this. We learn, first of all, that we can trust God to meet our needs right here and right now. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. We pride ourselves on being able to take care of ourselves, to provide for our own needs. And death reminds us that in life there are events that are out of our control and beyond our personal resources. So what do we do? When we, when we come to this experience of death, which is beyond our control, beyond our resources, we have to trust in God. For all the family, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and especially Christy, I don't know all that you're experiencing. I've had some of the losses that you've had. I remember the death of a great-grandmother. I remember the death of all my grandparents and both parents. We all grieve differently. We all handle these things differently. But I can say to you on the authority of God's word that God will be sufficient to meet your need. We can trust him. God's grace is sufficient, just as it was for Moses, for David, for Jeremiah, for Paul, for Peter, for all who know Christ, for all who trust him. Surely learned in her own life that God's grace was sufficient. She gave her life to Christ and found him to be sufficient for the forgiveness of her sins and the promise of eternal life, and then for every part of life. So as time goes by, and you're reminded of Shirley, her faithfulness, her graceful strength. Let it remind you of the sufficiency of God's grace for you right now. That may be happening very soon as you go by somebody's garden and you're reminded of her garden and what a wonderful gardener she was. You'll remember her devotion to her children and her grandchildren and that was so evident as some of you said she made so many sporting events time and time and time again how she'd have the grandkids help her in the garden help her when she was cooking or baking you'll remember how she loved to play board games and card games and was very competitive when she played Shirley was hard working she was generous she had a servant heart. Let all these things remind you of her and also remind you of the sufficiency of God's grace. Most of all, be reminded of God's grace where you remember how she lived these last few months of her life. Many of those days were battles just to get through the day. Someone said that even in those days, these verses from Jeremiah 17 reminded them of Shirley. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. It was said of Shirley in these final months, she was a pillar of strength who did not give in to fear. She did not give in to worry. There was a drought, but the leaves were always green. And that was Shirley. And that was the, the grace of God in her life. She trusted in the one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. All these things are reminders of the pain and the grief, but God's grace will be sufficient as you go through this valley. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. So how do we trust God? Where do we begin? The one thing Shirley wanted to be made very clear on the day of her funeral was the gospel. 
how to trust God for salvation through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that if we receive him, he gives us the right to become the children of God. So here is how you become a child of God. Here is how you receive Jesus Christ into your life. The Bible tells us that eternal life is a free gift. Nobody can earn their way into heaven. Everybody who's in heaven today got there by the grace of God. And there are biblical facts which make it possible for you to have a relationship with God. First one is this. God loves you. He created you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you right now and eternally in heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him might not perish or to have eternal life. Second fact, sin has separated you and me and everybody we know from God. The Bible defines sin as choosing our way over God's way, choosing God's will over our will. And we've all made this decision. We've all made this choice. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Our sins have separated us from God. And he cannot allow us into his perfect heaven. Instead, we're each separated from God and could be for all eternity. Third fact, you cannot repair your broken relationship with God by yourself. Many people think they can be good enough or give enough or be religious enough to earn God's forgiveness and go to heaven when we die. But the Bible teaches that the only payment for sin is actually death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Someone must die for the sins we've committed. Fourth fact, Jesus did that. Jesus died to pay the debt owed by your sins and by my sins. Since Jesus was sinless, his life was perfect. He owed no debt to God. His death could pay for our sins. He took our place on the cross, and he suffered the penalty that we deserved. His death now makes it possible for a righteous God, a perfect God, to forgive our sins and offer us salvation. Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. <clears throat> Excuse me. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then fifth, you need to receive the gift that Jesus gave. You must choose to trust in Jesus, what he's done for you, rather than trying to restore your relationship on your own. In faith, you rely completely on Jesus to make you right with God. Confess your sins to God, confess your failures to God, and choose to live by his word, by his will and decide that you'll make Jesus Christ your Lord, your Master, the boss of your life. Through prayer, you can meet Jesus today. There is no single prayer that you need to pray. There's no magic formula, but the following words as I lead us in prayer is something you could pray to trust Jesus Christ as Lord. If you'll pray them with a sincere commitment of your heart in life, you can join me, you can join so, so much of this family, you can join Shirley in knowing Jesus Christ. So would you pray with me? And you might pray something like this. Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sins and my failures. And I admit to you that I'm a sinner, that I need you, to forgive me, to save me. And so I ask you now to forgive me of my sins. I turn away from them now. I invite Jesus to come into my life as my Savior and as my Lord, and I turn my life over to him completely. I will live for him as long as I am on this earth. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for making me a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. When we have that relationship 
with Christ. You have a hope in this life and in the life to come. We experience and we know his grace. That is why we grieve, but we do not grieve as those who have no hope. As Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Surely trusted that promise. And she lived her faith. And she sought to share that faith with every resource every talent, every gift that she had. She was a teacher who wanted children to know the truth of the gospel. And because of Shirley's faith, not because of all that she did, but because of her relationship with Jesus Christ, because of what Jesus did in coming to the earth, dying on the cross, and rising from the grave, Shirley is more alive today than any of us. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to lead us in prayer, and we'll be closing. But on behalf of the family, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Most of all, thank you for your prayers. After we pray, and I'm part of the prayer is going to be a blessing for the meal downstairs. So you're invited to the meal downstairs. There are stairs down this way to your right. Stairs, if you go out this door and you go down the stairs and take a right and a left, and that will get you in the fellowship hall. If you need the elevator, it is out here on the left. When the elevator opens, you go right, right, and right again, and you'll be in the fellowship hall. Okay. All right, let me pray for all of us. And again, thank you and continue to pray for this family. Father, we thank you for the life that you give us. And we know that every day, every heartbeat, every breath is a gift from you. And now Shirley Barrow, one of your children, has gone from this life. For a little while she's gone from us, but she has not gone from you. And we, we thank you for the truth that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We thank you that we have not lost her, but that you have eternally found her. She is in your presence. So we thank you for the hope that we can have in Christ. Thank you for the comfort we can have when we turn to you. I pray for Christy. I pray for Christine, for Brad, for Gary, for Tim, for all the grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Touch each heart. Give them strength. Give them peace. Thank you for Shirley's legacy. May it continue across the generations in the lives of those who knew her best. And now, Father, we thank you for the meal that we're going to share, for the conversations that we will have across the table, for the memories that will be shared. And we thank you for every good gift you give us. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.